This is a diagram showing the lateral cuts or sagittal cut of nose, nasopharynx and the neck. You can see the glottis and also the tracheal air column here. And if there is an obstruction at or above the level of vocal cords, this is a vocal cord, this green color, at or above the level of vocal cord, what will be the complaint of patient? You might have seen patients coming to a casualty with an upper airway obstruction. And uh, you can hear the high-pitched musical sound as soon as the patient enters the door of casualty. Isn't it? So that is strider or uh, sound due to upper airway obstruction. So uh, if there is an obstruction here, an alternative uh, way to give uh, airway is to go beyond the level of vocal cords or beyond the level of obstruction. Isn't it? So today's class is on tracheostomy, uh, which is very important both for theory and also for your uh, clinical practices. Okay. So in this class, I will deal with the indications of tracheostomy, the contraindications, the functions of tracheostomy and also the steps of tracheostomy. Postoperative care and complications and also the different types of tracheostomy tubes. Uh, will be dealt in next classes. Okay, so what is this tracheostomy? What do you mean by a tracheostomy? Is tracheostomy same as that of tracheotomy? Another word, tracheotomy. Is both are same? If an opening is made into the trachea, uh, your Hyoid bone, then thyroid, your cricoid, then the tracheal, first one, second, third, fourth. Okay, this is the uh, anterior view, frontal. So, if you are making just an opening in the trachea, you are making an opening, that is tracheotomy. Otomy means making an opening. Okay, so that is tracheotomy. And if it is made into a permanent or a communication which is connected to the skin over the trachea. So there is a communication through the skin into the trachea. It becomes a tracheostomy. Stomy, skin, through the st uh, skin. An opening made through the skin. That is tracheostomy. You might have heard of gastrostomy, jejunostomy, like that. Here, uh, in a tracheostomy, there is a skin communication. Through the skin, a communication to the trachea. So that is the basic difference between a tracheostomy and a tracheotomy. So actually this uh, tracheotomy is a step of tracheostomy. Okay. So why we go for a tracheostomy? What are the functions of this tracheostomy? Obviously the one thing it bypasses. Okay. If usually we make a tracheostomy opening at the level of uh, this second and third rings through this here. So what are the functions? One function is bypasses the upper airway obstruction. Bypass the obstruction. So the functions. One, it will bypass the obstruction. If there is an obstruction at or above the level of vocal cord, a tracheostomy will bypass that obstruction. Okay, anywhere in the pharynx or uh, nasopharynx or uh, any area above the level of vocal cords. Second, it will improve the alveolar ventilation. So, how it will uh, improve the alveolar ventilation? One is by reduction of dead space. What is the normal dead space? The normal dead space is 150 ml. Okay. 150 ml. And this tracheostomy will reduce it by 30 to 50 percentage. Okay. 30 to 50 percentage reduction of dead space will occur after doing a tracheostomy. Then we, uh, again it will reduce the resistance of the uh, alveolar resistance. Okay, so through by doing this it will improve or increase the uh, alveolar ventilation. 
And third function is protection. Protection from what? Protection of the tracheobronchial tree. What comes below this? There is a <coughs> lung. Okay. So this uh, tracheobronchial tree is protected from blood and also from secretions. Okay. So blood and secretions. This will give a, especially the cuffed uh, tracheostomy tubes will protect it. And then a tracheal toilet. What is that? We have to give uh, frequent suction in case of uh, respiratory uh, insufficiency or uh, painful respiration, uh, paralytic uh, disorders. In all these conditions, there will be collection of secretions in the tracheobronchial tree. So, by doing a tracheostomy, we can give a uh, suction through that. So that we have, we can avoid repeated intubation or bronchoscopy, etc. Okay, so that is a tracheal toilet. Then intermittent positive pressure ventilation. If we want to give intermittent positive uh, pressure ventilation for more than 72 hours, it is always to go for a tracheostomy rather than an endotracheal intubation. So IPPV and also in some cases of anesthesia, especially the facial injuries or uh, tumors of this area, it is better to go uh, do a tracheostomy for giving anesthesia. So all these are the functions of tracheostomy. Okay. And then what are the indications? Indications of tracheostomy. What are they? Indications. The indications, we can divide the indications into uh, or categorize the indications into three main groups. So, one is an upper respiratory tract obstruction at or above the level of vocal cords. So, the cardinal sign of an upper respiratory obstruction is strider. What is a strider? Strider is a high pitched musical sound. So, it can be an inspiratory strider or it can be an expiratory strider or it can be a biphasic. Inspiratory strider means the obstruction is at or above the level of vocal cord. There will be a high pitched uh, musical sound during inspiration. And what is expiratory strider? Expiratory strider is mainly due to intrathoracic lesions. Inspiration will be normal, but during expiration there will be a sound. That is mainly due to intrathoracic lesions. And biphasic during inspiration as well as expiration. Why, do, uh, why it is so? The main uh, cause of biphasic. Strider is at the level of vocal cord or at the cervical trachea. Okay, so this is strider. You have to differentiate a strider from strutter. Okay, what is strutter? Strutter is a uh, low pitched uh, sound similar to snoring. Okay, it is due to uh, collapse of the pharyngeal airway. This area. This is due to collapse of pharyngeal airway and that is called strutter which is low pitched. But the strider is typical, high pitched musical note, you will get it. Okay, so that is one cause. Maybe due to um, yeah, infection or infective causes like an acute laryngotracheobronchitis, or uh, can be due to an neoplasms or trauma, any cause of an upper or foreign body, all will cause an upper respiratory tract obstruction. And second is, second indication is retained secretions. So under retained secretions, all these will come. Usually when there is secretions, we will cuff out the secretions, isn't it? So if we cannot cuff, because of inability to cuff or painful cuff. Uh, what are the causes of painful cuff? Maybe due to uh, multiple rib injuries uh, or a pneumonia. And uh, inability to cuff in cases of uh, stroke, cerebrovascular accidents, narcotic poisoning. All this cause when inability to cough. So it will lead to uh, retained secretion. In respiratory muscle paralysis. In case of William Barry or Balba Polio, Mycenae Davis, all their cases will be respiratory muscle paralysis or spasm of respiratory muscles. Respiratory muscle spasm. You will get in tetanus, eclampsia or strychnine poisoning. These are the common causes of respiratory muscle spasm. Uh, again, uh, the other cause for retained secretion is aspiration. In conditions like bulbar polio or bilateral laryngeal paralysis, you get uh, aspiration of secretions. So all these are will lead to 
retain secretions and it is an indication for a tracheostomy. Because I already told the we can give through this tracheostomy we can give uh, suction of the uh, secretions and can be drained out. Okay. Then respiratory insufficiency. Uh, respiratory insufficiency in conditions of em like uh, emphysema, bronchitis, bronchitis, etc. You get a respiratory insufficiency. Uh, there it will improve the alveolar ventilation. How? That I already told along with the uh, functions of tracheostomy. So these are the indications of tracheostomy. And then what are the contraindications? Only one contraindication. What is that? That you can, you can tell that. That is an obstruction below the level of cytotracheostomy. Is it, uh, is there any uh, use of doing a tracheostomy if the obstruction is below the level of tracheostomy site? There is no use. So only one contraindication and that is an obstruction below the level of tracheostomy site. Next is types of tracheostomy. What are the types of tracheostomy? Types of tracheostomy can be divided according to site. Okay, according to the site. What is the usual site of a tracheostomy? It is done at the second to third tracheal drain. This is one, two, three, four. So usually we do tracheostomy between second to third third or fourth, second to fourth tracheal, uh, tracheal rings. Okay, so usually we do between second and third and also can be done between second, third and fourth. So this is a usual site. If we do above, around uh, the level of first tracheal ring, what is the uh, structure coming, or, uh, overlapping the first tracheal ring? It is a thyroid isthmus. So if we do uh, at this level, it becomes a high tracheostomy. There is only one indication for a high tracheostomy and that is a malignancy or carcinoma larynx for which we are planning a total laryngectomy later. In that case, we can do a high tracheostomy because at the time of laryngectomy, we have to make a permanent stoma at lower down. So that is one indication for a high tracheostomy and that is CA larynx. Okay. Otherwise, what is the uh, complication that can happen if we go for a high tracheostomy? I already told the thyroid isthmus is coming in relation to that. The isthmus of thyroid will come like this. Okay, so uh, a high tracheostomy uh, it can lead to perichondritis of the thyroid, uh, thyroid uh, cartilage or second, it can lead to a subglottic stenosis. If you are doing this area, it will go for a subglottic stenosis. So, the complications of high tracheostomy, one is perichondritis of the thyroid cartilage and second, it can go for a uh, subglottic stenosis. And so, we usually uh, will not do there and the only indication for the high tracheostomy is a CA larynx for which we are planning a uh, total laryngectomy later on. And the next other type is a low tracheostomy, below the fourth tracheal ring we go. This also should not be done because there is chance of injuring the great vessels in the neck and also the apical pleura, especially in case of children. And also this uh, tracheostomy tube, if it go for a low tracheostomy, the tracheostomy tube will impinge on the suprasternal notch. It will be highly uh, uh, discom give a high discomfort to the patient also. So this low tracheostomy should be avoided because complication, injury to the great vessels of the neck and also apical pleura and it is more uh, complicated in case of children. According to the uh, indication or the need of tracheostomy, we can divide that into an emergency and elective. Emergency tracheostomy is needed mainly for an upper respiratory obstruction where the patient is in severe stridor and in uh, elective tracheostomy, we plan to do an elective tracheostomy and uh, uh, in cases where we are anticipating a an, uh, respiratory obstruction later on. And also, if we are planning for an uh, IPPV is uh, prolonged for more than 72 hours, it is better to go for an elective tracheostomy than an endotracheal induration. The tracheostomy can be in permanent or a temporary. In most of the cases, it is uh, temporary tracheostomy. Once the indication is 
uh, over or when the cause of tracheostomy is over, we can close the tracheostomy and if it is done permanently and uh, there are only two indications for a permanent tracheostomy and one is in CA larynx, as I already told, it is CA larynx, malignancy larynx after doing a uh, total laryngectomy and also the second is in bilateral abductor paralysis. Okay, bilateral abductor palsy. So this and this we go for a permanent tracheostomy. Okay. Uh, so the types can be uh, can be a high tracheostomy or a low tracheostomy or can be a emergency or an elective tracheostomy or uh, can be again uh, temporary tracheostomy and also permanent tracheostomy. In some surgeries we go uh, do a prophylactic tracheostomy especially of the uh, base of tongue or in the oropharynx anticipating an edema later on we also go for a prophylactic tracheostomy in the uh, to give care in the post-operative period. Okay, so steps or the procedure of tracheostomy. What anesthesia? The preferred one is general anesthesia with an endotracheal intubation, especially in infants and children. But if it's a dire emergency, we can do it without anesthesia also. And uh, if giving local anesthesia, it is 1% lidocaine with a 1 in 1 lakh uh, epinephrine. Uh, anesthesia is given always in a diamond pattern. Uh, infiltration given like this. Okay. Uh, <coughs> it is starting from the Lower end of right cartilage up to the uh, suprasternal notch. It is given in this pattern. So needle is inserted from here and give in this line and after that go like this and from here it is to this area and then to this area. So in a diamond pattern the local anesthesia that is 1% uh, lidocaine with 1 in 1 lakh epinephrine is given. And what is the position? Definitely it is supine position because the trachea should be placed anteriorly and an extension is given, neck extension. How can we give the neck extension? By put, uh, putting a pillow or a sandbag under the shoulders and head is stabilized with a head ring. Okay, so that the position is supine with the neck extension as you go for a um, thyroidectomy, the same position that is extended neck with a sandbag or a pillow under the shoulders and a, um, head is fixed with a head ring. Okay. And after that, this will be the uh, appearance. We have to identify certain landmarks. One is definitely the superior thyroid notch. You ask the patient to solo or if under general anesthesia also, we can get the superior thyroid notch. That is the first point. The second point is the cricoid cartilage. Definitely there is a change in consistency going from thyroid to cricoid cartilage. Second, identify that. And third, it is the suprasternal notch. So identify the superior thyroid notch, the cricoid cartilage and the suprasternal notch. Okay. <clears throat> and incision can be a vertical incision from the lower border of cricoid to the suprasternal notch. Either it can be a vertical incision or it can be a horizontal incision. If it is a vertical incision, it is a midline vertical incision starting from lower end of cricoid cartilage to suprasternal notch, purely strictly midline incision. And if it is a horizontal incision, keep your fingers over the suprasternal notch and put an incision over there, two finger breadth above or midway between cricoid cartilage and the suprasternal notch. Usually a 3 to 3 cm incision will be enough or we can go from, this is a sternocleidomastoid, one sternocleidomastoid to other sternocleidomastoid. These are the instruments needed for doing a tracheostomy. Number 15 and a number 11 blade with a VP handle.
straight and curved artery forceps, a hook with a right angle retractor, two Langenbach retractors, cricoid hook, tracheal dilator and uh, needle holder. Of this, the tracheal dilator, cricoid hook, the Langenbach retractors and the blade with BP handle are very essential for performing a tracheostomy. And also, before starting tracheostomy, should be ready with the tracheostomy tube. This is a port of tracheostomy tube with an obturator and a cuff. You should check the integrity of the cuff before starting tracheostomy. And if needed, it should be ready with the strap strappings. The incision, uh, before starting incision, uh, giving local incision, that is 1% lidocaine with 1 in 1 lakh epinephrine. Uh, in a diamond shaped fashion between the lower border of cricoid and the suprasternal notch and uh, vertical or a horizontal incision can be done this is horizontal incision between the anterior border of two sternocleidomastoid muscle midway between the cricoid cartilage and the sternal notch the scar is less with this but chance of bleeding is more and after incision tissues are dissected in the midline strap muscles are separated in the midline and dissected laterally the thyroid isthmus is uh, retracted upwards or ligated and cut. We are retracting the tissues with Langenbeck retractor. And always palpate the trachea and make, it, make sure that it is in the midline. Never forget to palpate in between. The trachea should be palpated in between the uh, procedure. And thyroid isthmus retracted upward or ligated and cut. Okay. And uh, once you identify the trachea, inject 4% silocaine into the tracheal lumen before putting the tracheal incision. This is how. And before spraying, withdraw the needle. To see air bubbles, see the patient coughing in this. This a a patient is in local anesthesia, and you can put either a, a vertical incision or horizontal incision uh, over the trachea. And uh, this is a jock flag, B J O R K. See either a horizontal slit or a vertical slit or a jock flag. The ramp of trachea is uh, excised. And it is sutured to the skin, which allows easier replacement of the tracheostomy tube. This is not commonly performed. And if a jock flap is uh, sutures are pulled, they may tear the ram and may occlude the stoma. That should be taken care of. And if you are doing under general anesthesia, carefully withdraw the endotracheal tube before uh, inserting the uh, tracheostomy tube and after putting the tracheostomy tube uh, either suture it to the skin or tie it securely okay